Hi all, uh, here today I'm going to talk about alternating series, which is section uh, 11.5 in the book. Um, so I want you to remember that we have seen in a number of examples an expression inside a formula in a sequence that looks like minus 1 to the n, or sometimes minus 1 to the n plus 1, or minus 1 to the n minus 1. We've seen the effect of that is that it switches signs. So here's an example, the sequence minus 1 to the n over n. When you plug in n equals 1, you get minus 1 to the 1 over 1, so minus 1 over 1. When you plug in n equals 2, you get minus 1 squared, which is 1, over 2. When you plug in 3, you get minus 1 cubed over 3, which is minus 1 over 3. Minus 1 to the 4th is plus 1 over 4. Minus 1 to the 5th is minus 1 over 5. So you end up getting 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth. And then the signs keep switching. Same thing happens here. Minus 1 to the n plus 1, n squared. It again, you write down n squared, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And then you multiply it by... 1n equals 1, minus 1 squared, which is plus 1. 1n equals 2, minus 1 cubed is minus 1. So again, you're alternating signs. This time you're starting at the positive. Okay, third example is a little bit different. If we have 1 over minus 2 to the n minus 1, then notice minus 2 to the n minus 1 is, by the rules of exponents, minus 1 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. That minus 1 to the n minus 1 we can actually bring up to the top because it's always 1 or minus 1. It's its own inverse. So even though it doesn't look it, this expression is another version of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over power of 2. So we end up with 1 over powers of 2 times an alternating sign. Similar thing happens when it shows up inside a series. I want to do an example, and um, I think we are now at a point where a lot of these kind of basic calculational things are hopefully getting um, in your fingers, but I really want to catch if they haven't. So I want to ask you to look at this series, sum from k equals 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the k plus 1 over k. I want you to write out the first five terms, remember these are the terms, plug in k equals 1 through 5 into this expression, and then write out the first five partial sums, the sum from 1 up to a certain point. Stop the video without moving forward. Do that. When you're done, come back. We'll look at it together. If something isn't working out quite right, this is a good moment to catch it. Or you're in a good place to fix that, but let's catch it now. Okay, go ahead and do that, and here we go. Here's what the individual terms look like. They look like 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5. The usual harmonic series, remember this is 1 over n, is called the harmonic series. But this minus sign means, minus 1 to the n plus 1, means the signs alternate. Okay, This is called the alternating harmonic series. So it's a p-series with p equals 1, except we throw in this alternating sign. What do the partial sums look like? Well, s1 is just the first term. Um, s2 is the first two terms. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. s3 is 1 minus a half plus a third, which works out to 5 sixths. s4, 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth. When the dust settles, that's 7 twelfths. And finally, S5, when the dust settles, is 47 over 60. And notice how this works. You're, you keep adding and then subtracting and then adding and then subtracting, so you get a big number, then a small number, then a little bit less big, a little bit less small. Um, if you graph these, so if here is S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then on the y-axis is the value. You go 1, 1 half, 5 sixths, 7 twelfths. It's down here, 
47.60 is up here. It keeps bouncing up and down, but each jump is a little bit smaller. So you can see the points are getting kind of hemmed in by decreasing upper values and increasing lower values. They're getting closer and closer together. They must be approaching some limit. That's the logic of the alternating series test. First, just a little bit of terminology. Um, we've got the terms of this sum. We're going to look at some sum like minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. Um, the terms, as always, we'll call ak. The kth term in that expression is ak. Since its sign is going to be changing, it's also going to be useful to talk about the positive version of it. Okay, so the this the series we'll care about, the alternating harmonic, is minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Its positive version, over, I'm sorry, minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n, its positive version is just 1 over n, the regular harmonic series. So the positive version we will call bk. So with that in mind, we'll say that a sequence or a sum, so a sequence would be the individual terms, the sum is the sum of those individual terms, we'll call those alternating if the terms can be written as minus 1 to the k or minus 1 to the k plus 1 times a positive, which we'll call bk. So we'll always go back and forth between the alternating series, the sum of minus 1 to the n over 2 to the n, and its positive version, just 1 over 2 to the n, without that alternating business. Okay, so here's what the alternating series test. It's, as always, it's going to tell you when a series like this converges or diverges. Specifically, if the series is alternating, and if its positive version, bk, is decreasing, we've seen that before. So we've got alternating series decreasing, that is, each term is bigger than the next, and it approaches zero. So the limit of the positive terms goes to zero. In that case, the original sum converges. Okay, this is a little bit like the divergence test. The divergence test says if the limit of the terms doesn't go to zero, then the series diverges. So this says when the series is alternating and decreasing, that if the limit of terms does go to zero, then it converges. So it's sort of the other half of the divergence theorem, but it only works for alternating series. <laughs> um, and one thing to remind you of, as always, um, that all these tests, you only have to check that it's eventually true. So as long as the, if the first few terms are not alternating, decreasing, you're still okay, as long as eventually the BKs are decreasing, excuse me, and eventually the series, the individual terms are alternating. All right, so let's, let's put this into action. Let's decide if the following series converge or diverge. First one I wrote out with a dot dot dot, so we first have to turn it into a formula. You can see it's alternating, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus. So you know right away it's going to have either minus 1 to the n in it or minus 1 to the n plus 1. Well, the first term is positive. The first term of minus 1 to the n is negative. First term of minus 1 to the n plus 1 is positive. So this is the one we're going to use. So we'll put a minus 1 to the n plus 1 in there. And then the rest of the terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they're always 1 over something. 1 over what? Well, each time the index goes up by 1, denominator goes up by 2. So this is, uh, um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I started at 0. Um, uh, yeah, I messed this up. I'm so sorry. Um, if we're starting at 0, then this should be minus 1 to the n. And um, let's do a little erasing here. And that's not an eraser. There we go. That didn't work so well. Okay. 
Um, if we go back here, one, zero, one, two, three, four, then um, each term the index goes up by one, the term denominator goes up by two. So we see that each denominator is twice the index plus one. So two n plus one. Sorry about that. Um, so this is our alternating series, sum from zero to infinity minus one to the n over two n plus one. So the positive terms are one over two n plus one. It's alternating. The positive terms are decreasing. Easiest way to see that is just graph one over two to the x plus one. Looks like this. It's positive and decreasing throughout. Um, <clears throat> but you can also see that those numbers, one third, one fifth, one seventh, are getting smaller. Okay. Last thing to check, usually the, the only really interesting thing is, does the limit of the individual terms go to zero? Yes. Denominator is growing while the numerator is staying constant, so this goes to zero. Therefore, by the alternating series test, the series converges. Let's look at the second example. Minus one to the k, k plus one over k. This one starts at k equals one. Again, it's clearly an alternating series, minus one to the k. And if you look at the individual terms, k plus one over k, they are decreasing because if you graph x plus one over x, it's gonna look something like this. But the limit as k goes to infinity of k plus one over k is one. So the a, technically the alternating series test doesn't tell us anything. If it doesn't go to zero, it doesn't tell you whether the series converges or not. That's okay. The divergence test does, right? By the divergence test, if these guys are going to one, then the alternating version of them is jumping between one and minus one. So it's not converging to zero. So by the divergence test, the series diverges. Okay couple of problems to try. Last fact, the alternating series test is another one that gives you an error estimation. And I said this before, but I'll say it again. Here are, here's our favorite uh, alternating harmonic series, one minus a half plus a third minus the fourth. Here's a bunch of values. And what you notice is that the odd values are all on the big side and decreasing and the even values are on the small side and increasing, right? Because to get from 1 to 0.5, you subtracted something. To get from 0.5 to 0.83, you added something. The somethings are getting smaller, so the net effect from 1 to 8.3 is to get smaller. Um, so that means the limit, drawing that graph again, if you've got 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.83, um, the limit is somewhere in between, which means that it is always closer to any of these partial sums than the next term, okay? Um, and remember, the difference between any Sn and Sn plus one is Bn plus one. So that means the error, the difference between the partial sum and the infinite sum in absolute value, because we always put error in absolute value, is always less than or equal to the next term. So that's a really easy error estimate. Let me give you some examples. How close is S1000 to the limit of the harmonic series? So if we took that sum up to 1000, how close would we get? The answer is the error is bounded by the next term, 1 over 1001, which is 0. 0.000999. So it is within point almost 0 0.001 of the actual limit. So that means it's accurate to two decimal places. It's almost accurate to three. It's off by at most 0 0.001, so off by one decimal place. Um, other direction to look at, how far out in the series do you have to go to get, let's say in this series, k equals one minus one to the k plus one times one over k squared if you want an error of at most 0.005, okay? 
Well, we know the error is bounded by the next term, 1 over n plus 1 squared. We don't know what n is, but if we want that to be less than the biggest excess, excess, acceptable error, we just solve. You divide by 0.05 to get it to 2,000. You divide by, you multiply by n plus 1 squared. Take the square root of both sides. I flip the direction. That tells you that n, in order to get that small an error, n has to be more than 43.72. Um, of course, n has to be an integer, so the first one that works is n equals 44. So if you take that sum out to 44 terms, you will be within 0 0.005 of the limit. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you have a great day. Next, we're going to talk about the ratio test.